for the last 95 years, the RSA has run the Student Design Award Challenge. The RSA sets a very uh, tough brief and they ask students to rise to that challenge. 700 entries were received in the 2019 awards and we have the winners of one of the categories. The two students with me just now designed, uh, used or rather followed the design brief which was to use circular design principles to design something for emergency medical care. So please, a round of applause for Mo Moira Kane and Hannah Grogan. <laughs> Moira, what on earth is that you've got in your hand <laughs> um, So we designed the personal patient pack. Um, it's a product service system which allows single-use devices that are used in an emergency to travel with the patient throughout their healthcare journey, um, which reduces waste by 67% per patient. So we had to kind of create like a multi-dimensional system in every device concept. Um, so we used existing systems already in place in the healthcare sector, for example, the RFID technology service as well as the laundry service already in place and then we also had to create our own service like the digitalizing the patient records so that our personal patient pack could also actually work in the healthcare sector not only in the HSE the NHS but globally. So, so yeah. uh, to talk us through the existing solution someone has respiratory problems the, mm -hmm. maybe a medic comes to see them and there's a multitude of different single-use products that that person would be using in order to get them to hospital and feel stable. Is that, is that correct? Is that the existing solution? Yeah, yeah. Um, so originally our personal patient pack would be used the scene of the instant. Like you said, the paramedics would have the pack stocked in the ambulance and they would go to the scene of the incident and they would pull out a pack and go to the patient and any of the devices that they used on the patient would be placed in the pack. So what's happening at the moment is there could be um, multiple of each device used and then thrown away after one use. Whereas with our pack, if it was implemented, only one of each device would be placed. So you're saving an abundance of waste per patient. So we calculated it at 67%. Mm -hmm. And one patient could actually be using four bag valve masks, maybe four delivery masks, which is around the back, um, two pairs of scissors, and then two nasal cannulas. So if one of each of these devices are used and travelling with the patient throughout their healthcare journey, it solves, it reduces waste dramatically. Um, not only waste, but also costs for the hospital and for the paramedics, and also time, because these prof uh, medical professionals don't have to actually assemble the devices, as they're already pre-assembled. It saves a lot of time in that kind of stressful scenario as well. Which is interesting as well, the bag valve mask on the actual device itself, it says single patient use, not single use. Yet what's happening today is we're throwing out the bag valve mask after each use. So if we apply our theory of keeping one device with the patient and apply this to all equipment that you're using in not only airway management but all in medical all devices. Of, yeah, medical care. So it, it's definitely a solution for the future. But the RFID element as well is interesting, isn't it? Because that gives the medical staff a record of who's been using it and why they've been using it. Is that mm, is that's part yeah. of the solution too, right? It's quite clever. Yeah, um, we were talking to one um, infection control officer within a hospital in Dublin and she said that as long as the, pa the personal patient pack is fully traceable to the patient, that means that there's no risk of cross-contamination or uh, the pack being um, displaced somewhere. Um, so they always know who owns it and actually what, how many of each devices are being used in the patient. So it was a good way of actually quantifying how many devices are used and the total cost of care as well. So the RFID chip would be placed on the top here with the handle and once the, the paramedic is taking the patient records, they scan the, the pack itself and connect the patient with their patient records. So these records are sent then to the hospital in real time so then the hospital can be aware of what's coming in and who the patient is. So it's making for more streamlined service as well. Um, yeah, so. And not only did we like research RFID, we also researched into QR coding and NFC um, technology, but because the RFID service is already available, we're piggybacking on what is uh, is an existing system already in place. Mm. So it's not like we have to redesign a system, mm. we're actually using what's what's there. So we're saving money. Smart. Yeah. Do you have backgrounds in, in the medical industry? 
Um, we both did, we ha for part of our, we did industrial design for our undergraduate degree, um, but we did a year's placement both in medical design companies in Ireland. And in September we're starting our medical device design masters for a year mm -hmm. in the National College of Art and Design in Dublin, so it'll give us, I suppose, more exposure to the validation and verification yeah. information that's needed to bring a med medical device across the borderlines to be available in the healthcare sector. So and even yeah. like thinking sustainability with medical devices, it's not really, you know, it's not really thought of high importance at the moment. But definitely, we're going to hopefully bring it into like our masters as well, and always think sustainable mm -hmm. in terms of designing medical devices. So okay. when you when you um, looked at the brief the RSA had set, mm -hmm. did it seem it didn't seem overwhelming to you then? I guess given given everything you've just told us that you could go and work with uh, medics to try and come to some sort of design solution? Yeah, it, we had contacts in the area definitely, but I suppose previously we had never put sustainability and healthcare together. Um, whenever we did our beginning our research at the beginning of the project, we talked to lots of healthcare professionals and they said saving a life comes before sustainability. And change in that way of thinking is something yeah. that we thought was a challenge in itself. To be um, clear, you weren't you weren't saying sustainability matters more than saving yeah. lives. You were, <laughs> you were integrating the yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so that's why how we came to mm -hmm. looking into the circular principles of the Adam MacArthur Foundation, yeah. and then we applied um, not only these principles to our overall idea, but in generating the pack itself. So um, the pack here is made out of polycot material, which. Um, the nurses and doctors uniform is already made from therefore it abides by current laundry process regulations available in the hospital so um, our pack would be placed in a laundry bin at the end of its life cycle after we added up as 100 plus washes that yeah. this can withdraw so this will be placed in the laundry bin and therefore the poly cotton doesn't um, rip in any way because it withstands um, also the writing that we added to the pack it's all embroidered on um, rather than using ink because of the high temperatures of the laundry process. Mm -hmm. um, the colours we used, the white, in case this got soiled at the scene of an accident or say beside it, if it was beside the patient's bed, um, then attention could be brought to it as quickly as possible and it could put in the laundry bin as quickly as possible and then a new pack would be issued to that patient and scanned and um, connected to the patient records. And then also the orange toggles. Um, just add attention to the parts that are needed in the pack if opening certain areas to get at the device itself. And then also the pack is designed for disassembly so no adhesives or plastic components are used so at the end of its life it can be um, taken apart and all parts can be put in the different bins. When someone designs something, it, te it tends never to be the first idea they come up with that, <laughs> that sits in front of us as a finished product. Mm, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that design process that you went through and some of the frustrations and, and maybe failures you had yeah. along the way? We went through nine iterations of the pack itself, so it started off as a paper bag or something. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a plastic bag, really, and then um, as the process went on we kind of reduced the amount of material because obviously we don't want to design something that's causing more waste um, within the area so we wanted to minimise it as much as possible and the idea actually stemmed from a conversation we had with a paramedic in a rural part of Ireland and he said that um, he was aware of the huge amount of waste that's created after you know the scene of an incident and he said what if these devices like they're thrown out straight away after the patient uses them what if they could travel with the patient and throughout their healthcare journey. So that was an idea that he had at the beginning. And we thought, okay, what is this sort of thing that we're going to carry the devices in? So that's when all of the iterations came. And this is the, the latest one anyway. And even getting exposure to as many contacts as we did, like infection control and procurement department in one of the most prestigious hospitals in Ireland, they told us things that we wouldn't have thought of as designers, like um, a Velcro being used in um, a medical design product would draw bacteria mm -hmm. so it would be um, a high area for inf infection or contamination and then also um, the magnets say if we were to bring that through to the laundry process it would stick to the inside of the drum you know and so we had to use like very minimal strength magnets yeah. and you know we wouldn't have had this information 
before until we got speaking yeah. to them and they give us tips and tricks of what to use and then obviously we have the pack we had today and it's our final concept and model so yeah. we're really happy with it. <laughs> and were there some naysayers along the way who told you that this would never work? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the RFID was the main thing yeah. about implementing it because we were always aware of the cross-contamination and when we were talking to people within the hospital we had to kind of reassure them that it would be okay brought through so the implementation of RFID means that it's fully traceable to the patient so that um, it kind of gives an extra bit of reassurance that it's not going to pass on to someone else mm. and I think that was convincing people that um, it is okay to bring it forward it was the main thing as well. And even going back with our final pack to the healthcare professionals that we talked to at the beginning about our initial idea um, that were completely against carrying single-use devices. The thought of them, the risk of contamination was too high. And we said, well, what if we could um, get confirmation from infection control that this would actually be viable? So when I went back to them with our pack and showed them that this is an airway management pack, they actually could say, I can see this being a pack that could be used in other areas of care. So. It's not just stopping at airway management, like tracheostomy care, among many others, is what the future of this is. So we hope that we can bring it to them yeah. in the future, you know. It's and tell us about that future. What, what next for this PPP, as you call it? Yeah. Is it going to be commercialised? Well, I suppose that the last three months we've won three awards. So the DNAD um, white and wooden pencil, um, by our communication design of um, circular economy through the um, healthcare sector and then we got shortlisted for the um, Universal Design Grant Challenge and then we also got um, some media attention from the Minister of Health Simon Harris in Ireland saying how good of work it was so that gave us confidence to believe that this could be brought into mm -hmm. NHS, HSC as I said before and globally you know it, can't, it just shouldn't just stop here. Yeah. It's about convincing the um, bigger bodies about the, the benefits of it and trying to get them on board. So at the moment we're going to push forward and see how far we can bring it. Mm. Well, best of luck with that. I've really enjoyed chatting to you today. So thank you very much, Moira and Hannah, for telling us, us about your award-winning design. Thank you. <laughs>